Worksheet for Chapter 8, Problem Solutions. The first problem is what we call a ballistic pendulum problem. We have a pellet with a mass of 2.1 grams that's traveling horizontally when it strikes a wooden block with mass 325 grams that is hanging vertically from a string with length 55.2 centimeters. We assume the thickness of this vertical block is negligible, so the, we're just going to use that. Um, the pellet is embedded in the wood and the block swings up to an angle of theta finals 37.1 degrees from vertical. How fast was the pellet initially traveling? I think most students, when they read a problem like this, will say, it's impossible to know. But it is. It's possible to know the concepts are collisions. And what kind of collision is this? I got to be a little more specific. Because it's embedded, we had deformation. Energy was absorbed by that block. So it's a perfectly inelastic collision. And in that inelastic collision, we have the condition of conservation of energy. Well, we have, we're going to, let's be general, the work energy relation. So everything we're going to do is either going to have to do with the laws of inelastic collisions or work energy relation. So draw, do, draw a diagram of the problem. This is like a really important, I think. I don't think you're ever going to get this right if you don't have the picture straight in your head. That shows the pellet and the block just before the collision, just after the collision, and at the maximum height of the swing. So here I've drawn a figure. So we have before the collision. We have the pellets coming in at unknown speed, but it is traveling horizontally. And we have this stationary block hanging from a string. Then we have just after collision. So these two relate through our rules for inelastic collisions. which is conservation of momentum because of such a short time frame and the pellet final is equal to the or maybe I should call it one instead of final v pellet one is equal to v block block I don't remember what I called it um, wood the wood one. And then we have going from just after the collision to where it swings up. Those are connected through the work energy relation. Work non conservative is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. Once the bullet ha or the pellet has embedded in the wood, there is no work non conservative. So the work not conservative is here. So we're going to start at the end because we know all of the parameters in the end and work our way back. But this picture is really important, and this is at highest point. So it's important to have that picture. Now, what was conserved during the collision? Momentum. Kinetic energy was not conserved because it was inelastic. It deformed the wood. What was conser conserved during the swing? Energy. Because there was no non-conservative force, as I just said. Find the equation for the final height of the block as a function of the angle and string length. So now we're going to get to something significant. So the final height. Well, I need to reference an initial height, and I'm going to say this here. The initial height is 0. And so this height here, there is my y1 information going from there. I can calculate this distance here was L. And using this triangle, I can calculate this distance right here as L times cosine of theta. So y1 is equal to that full length minus 
the length from the top down to where it is at its maximum height. L cosine theta final. I like the factor, okay. So there's my height. Now, oh, y2, what I call here, y1. Yeah, it should have been y2, because y1 was 0. Okay, now identify the equations for momentum, gravitational potential energy, and kinetic energy at each of the times illustrated. So before the collision, my momentum before the collision was mass of the pellet times the speed of the pellet initial. After the collision, it's giving mass of the pellet plus the mass of the wood because they are now embedded together, speed one. And at the top of the, speed, um, top of the swing, zero. They stopped, right? Now, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy initial, one half mass of the pellet, the pellet initial squared. Right after the collision, one half mass of the pellet plus mass of the wood and V1 squared, and at the highest point, zero. Potential energy initial, since I set my Y is zero here, then potential energy initial is zero, potential energy right after the collision is zero, and potential energy final is mass of the pellet plus mass of the wood times G Y2. So there I have the equations for each of them. And of these, I know all the masses, I know the speed of pellets, so I know the momentum initial, but I don't know momentum one, although I do know momentum is conserved, right? And then I don't know any of this stuff, but I know this again, I know what the height is. So, oh wait, actually I don't know the speed of pellets, so I don't know the momentum initial. So the only thing I know everything of is this. Well, yeah, that. If we look at a time, I know all of the values at this time. And so that's why I'm going from that, from the end to the beginning. Just like how I was telling you in class, they analyze a car accident. They take the skid marks and they know the speed at the end, right? It came to a stop. And then they calculate what the speed must have been before it started skidding and they work through it that way. So use the work energy relation between states two and three to determine the speed of the block and pellet immediately after the collision. So I am looking at, that's the problem. I am looking at the relationship right here. This is one and two. And so I have work non-conservative going from one to two is equal to zero, is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. So zero is equal to Kinetic energy 2 minus kinetic energy 1 plus potential energy 2 minus potential energy 1. Kinetic energy 2 was 0 minus 1 half mass of the pellet plus mass of the wood. V1 squared plus potential energy 2, that's mg times the height, which is L times 1 minus cosine theta final, minus zero. Oh, for M, I need to be specific there. It's the mass of the pellet plus wood. So taking this and solving for V, I'm going to first divide everything by mass pellet plus mass wood. And so those cancel. And I'm going to multiply everything by 2, which means divide everything by 1 half. And then rearranging to move this to the other side of the equal sign, I have V1 squared. Notice I multiply by 2 to get rid of that 1 half is equal to 2 times g l times 1 minus cosine theta final. So I just square root both sides. And yes, there is a plus or minus again 
it's obviously going to be going in only one direction. So I have the speed on, I didn't say put the equation, I just said put the numbers. So put the numbers, square root of 2 times 9.80 meters per second squared times the length of 0 0.552 meters. Just convert centimeters to meters. Did that in my head, actually. Unimpressed. Times 1 minus cosine of 37.1 degrees. And once you put all that together, you get that speed 1 is 1.480 meters per second. Okay, that's, that's not a very big speed. Not a very big speed. Actually, it seems like it should be bigger, but that's what it is. Use conservation momentum during the collision to calculate the speed of the pellet before the collision. So now we're going 0 to 1. So going 0 to 1, I have momentum 0 equals momentum 1. So that means mass of the pellet times speed of the pellet initial is equal to mass of the pellet plus mass of the wood times speed 1 that we just calculated. Therefore, the speed of the pellet initial is equal to mass of the pellet plus mass of the wood over mass of the pellet times V1. And this is where things get a little interesting, at least as far as I'm concerned. The mass of the pellet is so much different than the mass of the wood. That's 2.1 grams plus 325 grams all over 2.1 grams. Notice I could use kilograms, I could use grams, the units are canceling, times that speed I just found of 1.480 meters per second. And that gives me 230.5 meters per second, or 231 if you have to So it's going, the pellet was going 231 meters per second before it hit the wood. The wood hardly swung any because it was such a small mass pellet. Okay, final problem in this section. You have a volleyball with a mass of 270 grams. You slide the volleyball on a frictionless surface. We'll learn in just a chapter or two that if it has friction, it rolls, and that changes everything. With initial speed of 15 meters per second. It bounces off an initially stationary bowling ball with a mass of 5.5 kilograms. Assuming a perfectly elastic one-dimensional collision and no friction, what are the final speeds of the volleyball and bowling ball? The concept is, hmm, this is an elastic collision, so elastic collision, which means that both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. Draw, draw a diagram showing the balls before and after collision. Obviously, you're getting used to me saying draw diagrams. So here's the diagram showing the volleyball sliding toward the bowling ball, and then the volleyball bouncing back, the bowling ball bouncing forward. We could have answered these with no physics class whatsoever. Just from our practical experience, we know that if you have a stationary object, like let's say a car, and you have something light that comes and hits it, like say a person on a motorcycle, the motorcycle's gonna bounce back and the car rolls forward very slowly. So I got a picture to show that. Identify the equations for momentum and kinetic energy at each of the times illustrated. So before the collision, my momentum initial is just mass of the volleyball times speed of the volleyball initial. After the collision, now I have both balls, so I have mass of the volleyball, speed of the volleyball final, plus mass of the bowling ball, speed of the bowling ball final. And kinetic energy is likewise one half mass of the, I'm zooming in so I can actually try to write this in here, one half mass of the volleyball, speed of the volleyball squared, and final is one half volleyball initial. One half mass of the volleyball, speed of the volleyball, final, 
squared plus one half mass of the bowling ball, speed of the bowling ball finally squared. Use conservation of energy equation that we learned in class, that is V1 initial plus V1 final is equal to V2 initial plus V2 final, along with conservation of momentum equation to so solve for V1 final. So it's got a bunch of instructions all together. So what we have is the equation conservation of momentum. A P for momentum. I'll put momentum. Mass of the volleyball times speed of the volleyball. And notice it's initial minus final. Initial minus speed of the volleyball final equals mass of the bowling ball. And this is going to be final minus initial. Speed of the bowling ball final minus speed of the bowling ball initial. Well, speed of bowling ball initial is zero, so that's just zero. So that's one relationship. And then the second relationship is that speed of volleyball initial plus speed of the volleyball final equals speed of the bowling ball initial plus speed of the bowling ball final. And once again, this here is just zero. So we have two equations, and we know the speed of the volleyball initial. So we only have two unknowns, the speed of the volleyball final and the speed of the bowling ball final. So the easiest thing to do here is this is already solved for the speed of the bowling ball final, so we substitute that in. And we will have mass of the volleyball. And I'm going to expand the, um, the terms here. So speed of the volleyball initial minus mass of the volleyball, speed of the volleyball final equals mass of the bowling ball times speed of the volleyball initial plus mass of the bowling ball and speed of the volleyball final. These two terms here came from substituting in for the speed of the ball, bowling ball final. I, I really should have, I'm going to write the line in between. I realize after I write it that it's going to lead to confusion to leave it as is. Yes, my battery is running away. I'm sorry about that. I'll finish before it runs out. Putting in between, I have mass of the volleyball times. but the speed of the bowling ball final just substituted in there. And then I simply distributed to get the complete red equation. And I didn't mean to change that to red. I'm going to change it to green. Let's awesome. slide it up a little bit since I have it in And so now I'm trying to find the speed of the volleyball final. So just solving this for speed of the volleyball final have speed of volleyball final there and there. So I'm going to move this this direction, move this this direction. And I'll have mass of the volleyball, speed of the volleyball initial, minus mass of the bowling ball, speed of the volleyball initial, is equal to mass of the bowling ball, speed of the volleyball final, plus mass of the volleyball speed of the volleyball final. So there I factored out the speed of the volleyball. 
final on the right hand side so I can divide everything by that. And so dividing everything by mass bowling ball plus mass volleyball. And I have speed of the volleyball final. Equal to mass of the volleyball. Speed of the volleyball and well, I guess you can find this. And now I just put in my values, 15 meters per second times the mass of the volleyball, which was, ah, it's been too long, 0 0.270 kilograms, notice I changed from grams to kilograms, minus 5.5 kilograms over 0 0.270 kilograms plus 5.5 kilograms. Notice the top is a very negative value, and so this gives me a negative speed for the volleyball, and that negative speed is minus 13.6. Now, I actually only have two sniffing boots here, so it's minus 14 meters per second is the final speed for the volleyball.